This is a practice exercise from page 256 in the textbook. We're looking at taking atoms and arranging them in order of atomic radius. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find all of these atoms on the periodic table. So they're asking us about sodium, beryllium, and magnesium. So you should remember that in general the atomic radius increases as we go down a group and it decreases as we move to the right. So we can see that beryllium is an entire period above sodium and magnesium and because it's up here that means it's only using its second energy levels worth of electrons so beryllium is going to be the smallest because it's using its smaller energy levels. So when we write these in order of increasing atomic radius our smallest one is going to be beryllium and then if I look at sodium and magnesium, they are in the same energy level, so I can't tell them apart based on the energy level they're in, but I know that magnesium is further to the right than sodium, so magnesium is actually going to be a little bit smaller than sodium. And this might seem a little weird at first because magnesium has more protons and more electrons, but remember when we talked about Z-effective, those additional protons are actually pulling the electrons tighter because both sodium and magnesium have their electrons in the same energy level, that third energy level. So when we increase the protons, we're actually increasing that positive charge, which is increasing the pull on those electrons. So even though magnesium has more stuff in it, it means it's actually holding on to its electrons more tightly. So magnesium is going to be smaller than sodium, but larger than beryllium which means that sodium is going to have the largest atomic radius out of these three atoms. So this is how we use the periodic table to predict atomic radius. It's going to be very important that you can explain why some atoms have larger atomic radii and don't just explain it in terms of, well, it's left on the periodic table or it's down on the periodic table. You need to be able to explain it in terms of what kind of attraction we have between the protons and the electrons.